What is up everyone? Hello, it is Rachel here from Makers Gonna Learn, your ultimate die cutting community. And I have got a great video for you guys today. This is perfect for beginners as I'm breaking down three really easy iron on projects that are perfect for Cricut beginners. So these are all gonna be one layer, very easy projects. We're gonna do three different ones today. We're gonna do it on a t-shirt, on a pillow, and on a little handbag, a little like a zipper pouch here. And and these are all gonna be great projects for you guys to learn to master because they each take different techniques. So once you master this, then you guys can start layering HTV and getting a little more adventurous. But today we're gonna do one layer HTV projects on these three awesome materials so that we can give you guys all the tips and tricks you need to master them. Without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go ahead and start out with supplies. Here's what you're gonna need, guys. To make these three projects today, we're actually gonna be using every single Cricut mat. But if you don't have those, using a terry cloth towel folded several times will work just as well. But we have uh, the largest, the uh, medium, and the smallest little Easy Press mat here, along with our uh, Easy Press, the second generation nine by nine, and the mini Easy Press. Again, this is just our personal choice to use two different Easy Presses. If you only have one, or you have a household iron or something like that, that will work as well. We do have an awesome video on how to use a HTV with a household iron. I will link that down below as well. So you guys can check that out if you are interested. But uh, this is a Comfort Colors t-shirt from Hobby Lobby. What to know about t-shirts is that number one, they need to have a lot of cotton in them for the HTV to stick to them. And number two is you really need to make sure that this is pre-washed. So when you purchase it, you can bring it home and throw it in the wash and pre-wash that because you don't want to add your HTV on there um, afterwards because, or excuse me, before you wash it because the shirt will shrink but the vinyl will not. So it'll bunch up and wrinkle up and not be very cute at all. So go ahead and pre-wash your shirt if you haven't already. And then we're using a pillow cover here that we found at Hobby Lobby as well. And he was $5 and let's see, he's 16 by 16, so he's a really good size pillow. Uh, so this is what we're gonna be using today for our little pillow. We're gonna be putting a really cute cut file on it. And then this little zipper pouch was also from Hobby Lobby. Um, let's see here, it's a canvas wristlet is what it is um, marketed as. And it was only $3.99 and he's gonna be great for a little uh, decal here. So other than that and your easy presses and your mats, of course you're gonna need your machine, a, a standard grip mat, and we have two different colors of HTV here. We have white and we have black. We love to get our HTV from 651 Vinyl. I will link their store down below. Uh, they have so many things for all of your crafting needs and you guys will never be disappointed. The shipping is super fast and the prices are very, very competitive. Um, but yeah, guys, other than that, I will go ahead and show you guys what we've got going in design space, and then we can go ahead and cut our designs out and be prepping all of our blanks. But before we jump into design space, we have to measure our products here, our blanks here. So we're gonna start with this little guy here. So depending on what side you want him on, it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna grab our measuring tape, make sure you have a measuring tape handy, and we're gonna measure him. So we want him to be no wider then six inches, and when I say him, I mean our design. And I'll bring the camera in here so you can see a little bit better here. So this whole entire thing is about nine and a half by about six and a half. And we don't want, um, we do not want it to be that long. So it looks like a really good size for us would be about six inches for our decal. And that could go about this long, okay? So just keep that in mind, about six inches, and we know it can be I would say three and a half inches wide. I don't think we're gonna have it that wide. We're gonna be putting a beautiful little Tennessee State cut file on here, because that is where we are, good old Rocky Top. But you guys feel free to, of course, put your state or put any kind of cut file. The point of these videos today is just to give you guys the tips and techniques on how to do them yourself. So don't necessarily feel like you have to copy us 100%. We're just here to give you guys all of the awesome tips. So once you have that guy sized, we're gonna move on to our T-shirt now. So lay your t-shirt out onto the table. Make sure you have a lot of room here. And this is an adult medium, or excuse me, an adult large t-shirt. And we do have an amazing uh, HTV decal sizing chart. Um, free with any membership tier at Makers Gonna Learn, along with a lot more amazing uh, 
printable guides there. So definitely go check that one out in your member resources if you haven't already. But we like to say that around nine or 10 inches is perfect for this. So again, I'm gonna bring this in so you can see it a little closer. Nine or 10 inches, this is the 10 inch mark and it looks really good for the size of our shirt here. And then uh, width wise, it can be as long as we kind of want it to be. So you just don't want it to get a little bit past. I would say 10 inches is very long, uh, but width wise about 10 is a, is a good length for this guy. So next up, we're gonna have our uh, pillow cover. So we're just gonna tear him open, open him up here, and be able to open him. And we're gonna remove all these wrinkles, don't even worry about that. And I think the biggest that he needs to be is around eight inches. Now, this is why I'm saying this. This guy is a big pillow, of course, but when you stuff him, he's gonna go a little bit rounded, okay? He's gonna start curving a little bit, and you really wanna work with those curves. You don't wanna make this guy 11 and a half because curved, it could look a little bit distorted. So we're gonna wanna keep him around eight, maybe nine max inches um, wide and long. So since he's a perfect square pillow, that is around where we're gonna keep our little uh, pillow cut file. And and now that we have sized these, keep these in mind. And in a perfect world, guys, you guys can be able to one by one size them physically and then go in Design Space and size them as well. That will help you a whole lot. And here we are in Design Space, guys. And I have already color synced these really, really cute cut files here. So this black one that you see over here with all of our little stacked farm animals is going to go on our pillow in black HTV. Our Tennessee cut file here is of course going on our little clutch in white HTV. And then our other little uh, quote here that's going on our t-shirt that says, I craft so I don't kill people is going on uh, with white iron on as well. So one thing I do want to note that is super easy to do and it is a great way to visualize in design space is if you go over here to shapes and you can pick a shape, uh, we'll use a pillow as an example. It's a great example here. We know that our pillow is 16 by 16. So you can use this little, uh, piece down here next to our square over in the right hand corner. You can use him to change the size or you can go up to the actual size and click 16. And then we can change his color. We'll change his color to like a, kind of like a yellowish, just to, so you guys can see it. And now once this happens, guys, you can go over to a range on your top panel here, right there, I'm just clicking on it so you can see it. And you can send, send or you can click send to front. And now guys, you can see this visually on a object that is the same size as your pillow. So this actually looks fantastic for the size of our pillow. If we move off it, we can see that there's plenty of room around it for that stuffing to overtake our pillow and to look really, really great. So really definitely use shapes and design space, utilize those to be able to visualize your project better because sometimes that could make or break uh, changing up the sizing just a little bit because sometimes it is hard to size something perfectly in design space when you're not kind of seeing it. And me being a visual learner, I really do enjoy that. So once you're good to go on this, guys and you've already already sized them go ahead and click make it and you can see here that it has arranged it on three mats for us so this looks perfect both of these are white and this one is black so since we're using HTV it's very important that we switch on this little mirror toggle switch you see me switch that you can see me over here uh, to the left of the screen I'm gonna go through all of these and do the same thing because we are using HTV and now I'm gonna click continue and once it connects to our machine, all we have to do is click and set our materials. So we're gonna be using everyday iron on. I'm gonna leave that on default pressure. And now I'm gonna load my first mat. All right, our first mat is a uh, white. So we have our white HTV here and you can see this shiny side a little bit. This is the shinier side and then you can see the duller side. So there is a difference, especially when you are in person here, but you always wanna lay uh, iron on shiny side down. So we're gonna take our little roll here we're going to line it up as best we can. And then we're just going to kind of unroll it just like so. And use our hands, place it on the mat well. And then we're going to take our true control knife and I'm just going to cut it at that 12 inch mark right there. We love our true control knife guys. This is Cricut brand. If you haven't seen it, this is like an exacto knife on steroids. It's an amazing product. So now once you have this loaded in, we're just going to go ahead and cut this out with our machine. 
And now guys, while that's cutting, I'm sorry if it's a little bit loud, but now is a great time to preheat all of our easy presses here. So uh, we're gonna preheat him to 315 degrees for 30 seconds. If you all want more information on how exactly to set and heat your easy press settings, at Maker's Gonna Learn, we have this amazing printable guide that is free with all membership tiers that has so much goodness in it, along with easy press temperature charts, pages and pages of them to be able to look here and know that we have cotton canvas and uh, what to set it to. So this is definitely a great resource for doing that. And we're also just gonna go ahead and set our little baby easy press. We're gonna second, set it on the second notch. So turn your baby on and let him be heating up as well. And uh, while they're all heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in um, one of our easy press mats here because whenever he um, gets heated up, we're gonna go through here and heat our pillowcase and get all these little wrinkles out. And now that our easy press has preheated, we're gonna go through here and our baby one just preheated too. We're gonna go through here and press this guy. You can add some pressure if you want to. You'll most likely have to do this several times just to get all these out because for some reason in this canvas fabric, it is, they just really wanna stick. And now we can flip it over and do the same thing to the back. So our first mat has been cut and it does not look like we're gonna have very much uh, excess at all. I can get my true control knife and see about the excess, but I really don't think we're gonna have a whole lot, maybe just a little bit on the sides and the bottom. So it looks like our design ends right there. I'm just gonna cut that. It looks like our design ends right there. So I'm just gonna cut that. And now I'm gonna peel this up. And this is all the scrap we have. If you guys wanna add that to your scrap bin, be my guest. Now we have our uh, Cricut weeder tool here. And I just start in the corner and then just peel up with your hands. I usually peel in a circle around the edges and then work my way into the center. That's just kinda what I've always done. It's really worked for me. So that's what I'm gonna do to work my way around and if you guys are at this stage and you're starting to get a bit overwhelmed and you don't want to uh, fool with all this extra all you have to do is rip it okay so you can rip it off cut it off HTV is very forgiving in that way so we just like to kind of rip it and place it in a pile here so once you weed most of that you can just go in here with your uh, Cricut tool again and weed all this good stuff out be sure to get in the middles of the letters and things like that. And you guys can adjust the angle like of your head if you wanna make sure uh, you're weeding in the correct spot. Cause you can often find those cut lines if you, you know, tilt the mat or tilt your head either way, you can kind of see where those are. So you can go through here and just remove all the insides of these letters. And then we are gonna go ahead and also just uh, finish up cutting and weeding the rest of our mats so we can go and get to heating. So guys, while our last mat is cutting out, we're gonna take our easy press again, and I'm just gonna heat around on this shirt. Now, you can just heat where your um, design is going up here, but I like to go the extra mile and heat a little bit farther around my uh, design here. And again, the same as the pillow, this not only removes wrinkles, but it um, brings out moisture and takes that away so it can be, um, it can be adhered on really, really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this guy dry here. Or not dry, but cool. And then I'm also gonna do the same with my little uh, clutch here with the baby easy press. I'm just gonna go in here with uh, the baby and just kind of press him. I wanna get all the wrinkles out, all that moisture out. I'm gonna flip him over. Do the same to the back. And now while these two are cooling, I'm gonna weed my very last mat. All right, guys, I have all three of my uh, designs cut out and I wanna start off with my shirt. So we already went ahead and ironed out all the wrinkles for this guy. So I'm gonna give some tips and tricks to ensure you guys that this is gonna be perfectly in the middle and the center. Some foolproof ways to know how to do that. So after you already remove all the wrinkles, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bottom and the top of the shirt, just like this, and you're just gonna fold it over, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up here to the top, you're gonna hold both the neck pieces and make sure the neck pieces are even, and over here the shoulders are even. You're just gonna shake it out and lay it down. 
And now once you've made sure that the neck is lined up and the uh, sleeves are even, you can just go in with your easy press and heat in a line right here where you have um, creased. And don't worry about these little ripples here that's happening, that is totally fine. And once you are done with that, you can just take this side and open it right back up. And I hope you guys can see it's really faint, but there is a perfectly straight line in the middle of your shirt now that is perfect for um, making sure that your uh, decal is centered and everything like that. So uh, here's our decal. And another fun thing that we can do with this guy is to we're going to half him. So we're going to taco him up just like a little taco shell and make sure you are even with half of him. And then we're gonna notch, which when I say that, I just mean pinch, the very end of this transfer tape here. So we're gonna do that on both sides. And then we're gonna open them up and we're gonna lay them down according to that line here. So we're just gonna lay them down right where we think he's in the middle. And we know because of these notches and that line of if he is in the middle or not. And now we can take our measuring tape and make sure he is about three to four inches from the neck and he is. Um, so, once you have him exactly where you want him, we can go ahead and press him. So our easy press is set and we're gonna press half of it and then press the other half. Uh, since our image is larger than nine by nine, we're not gonna press the same um, spot twice, but it's very hard to burn iron on, so you don't really have to worry about that either. So we're just gonna press this side and press the other side and then we'll be good to go. And now that he's done, we're just gonna return the easy press, easy press back to its cradle. And we're gonna let this guy cool for a bit before we peel it. We are gonna do a warm peel, but not a hot peel. So make sure you let him cool just a little bit before you peel off that transfer tape. So now that it's cooled off a bit, you can just start on one side and carefully peel this up. And if you have any spots that aren't adhered, go ahead and replace your transfer a sheet and go ahead and hit it again with that easy press. But it looks like everything is sticking down perfectly for us here. So here's our shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and widen out this angle so you guys can see it. So it is perfect. It's directly in the center, it's even in the middle, and it is right uh, just a few inches down from the neckline, exactly how we want it to be in the center of the shirt. So this was a great little, um, project and I hope that you guys enjoy the techniques that I taught you for it and now we're just going to go ahead and move on to our pillow and this guy is still a little bit wrinkly for my taste so I'm going to go in here and uh, get the easy press again and de-wrinkle him and uh, like I said guys you'll have to do this several times because something about this canvas fabric just doesn't want to let go of those wrinkles so once you have that preheated and wrinkle free. Make sure that you note where your zipper is because your zipper is always, of course, gonna be the bottom of your pillow. Um, sometimes there is uh, zippers in the back in the center and that is why I have our um, other size of Easy Press here because I wanted to tell you guys, if you have a pillow that has the zipper in the middle, it is very, very good to place your Easy Press mat in there. That way when you're pressing, that zipper doesn't, you know, uh, do anything wrong to make you have a project fail with your iron on. So make sure that you stick your mat inside your pillow if you have a zipper back there because that will really help you have some project success there. So we have our little farm animals here. This is going to look so super cute. And uh, placing it in the middle is probably going to be uh, the hardest thing for you guys to do for this one because it's not going to look like it's in the center because the cow over here is a little bit longer than this side. So it's going to take you a while. So just be careful. Make sure you just uh, take your time when centering it up. Don't get too stressed about it. If you want to get out the uh, measuring tape, you absolutely can do that. But once you have it placed about where you want it, you can go back in there with your easy press and press it. So again, we're just going to do half and half on this on this guy. We're going to be sure to give good pressure, good even pressure with our hands on this heat plate. And we're just going to hit it once and then again on the top and be done with this little pillow. And a lot of people wonder if you might need a Teflon sheet for something like this. And to be honest, guys, you do not. We have some Teflon sheets and we use them for certain projects, but these types of projects, you really don't need a Teflon sheet on. Uh, it really won't do anything for your project. You will not have a project fail if you don't use a Teflon sheet. So don't be scared to just go ahead and lay your heat press on here. The only reason you would not want your heat press to go directly on your project is if you were doing a multi-layer project and your uh, vinyl was uh, exposed, you don't want any exposed vinyl to be touching that heat. Um, 
So now this has been hit in all the places. I'm going to bring the camera in because I want to show you guys some bubbles and hopefully you can see them. So uh, bubbles are a sign that you've done your job well. So if you go up here in their little lamb here, you can see some bubbles and that means that we did our job well. So once he cools down a bit, we're gonna go ahead and peel this off. Again, it is a warm peel, not a hot peel, so do be in, uh, pay attention to that, be mindful of it. Um, and then after this, guys, I'm gonna give you a little hack on how to stuff your pillow uh, because sometimes buying those inserts is a little expensive or sometimes you uh, maybe don't have them, which we didn't for a long time. And uh, so I have a little hack on how to stuff a pillow for uh, very, very cheap. So once this guy's cooled down a bit, we're gonna start in the corner and peel up just like all the other projects. And if you notice a spot is not heated, just like I said before, just put your transfer tape back on and re-hit that spot. It's no uh, no point in you ruining your project. And make sure you're going slow when you have little delicate pieces like your little pig's tail here and things like that, because those can easily be uh, pulled up with you. And then you could really ruin your project. So we do not want that. So once your pillow is done, guys, we actually have a body pillow that we bought from Walmart for about four bucks, I think. It's one of those really big jumbo body pillows. And we have been using it for months and months to stuff our pillows. So it's a really neat idea. I have it with me of course and this is what we're down to we're almost out of our body pillow and we do have some pillow inserts but they just don't I, I don't know we use them for a lot of other things um so sometimes they're in pillows and they're being used so this is a very good little alternative here so rule of thumb is to stuff your corners first i've picked that up from becca and court who are our sewists because lord knows i'm not a sewist and that's just a rule of sewing when you're making a pillow so we're going to stuff my corners first and then put some stuffing here in the middle and stuffing a pillow is a very personal preference you guys can stuff it to your liking depending on how um how fluffy you like it how stiff you want it you know how tight you want your little pillow to be stuffed so just stuff it to your liking and you can always add more of course if you if you want to it's not one of those permanent things you know so just gonna continue stuffing and don't feel like you need to make it perfect um, as you're stuffing it because you can always um, kind of move it around after you've zipped it to really get that stuffing in the spots that you want it just do your best in this process at this point and I have opened the whole entire bottom but now I'm gonna zip a little bit of it shut so that I can get into that corner and work my way out of the pillow Make sure you get that corner back there. And I love this cut file, guys. It was so easy to iron on. And just because I know we're gonna get some questions about it, you do not just have to iron on pillow cases or um, things like that. You can definitely iron on pre-stuffed pillows. We do it all the time and it's really, really fun to do. So I think I'll link a video down below on how to iron on a pre-stuffed pillow because you guys might wanna see that and it's a really cool process. So I'm just gonna Keep stuffing our pillow here. I'm gonna put one last good handful right in there and zip it shut. And now you can kind of go in there and move around. And I can see right here I need a lot more stuffing. So I'm gonna open it back up, grab a handful, stick it right back in there, and try and close it. Now I can kind of move that stuffing around. Guys, our pillow's almost gone. What are we gonna do? And here is our gorgeous farmhouse pillow. So this was a really easy one, guys. And so was this one. I love the uh, tips for the placement and things like that. And now, guys, we still have one more to go. We're going to be using the um, middle size Easy Press mat and the small Easy Press mat, along with our baby Easy Press here. So here's our zipper pouch. And what we're going to do is we're going to open this guy up. And we're gonna take our small easy press mat and we're gonna slide him inside. This is another one of those really great tips for you guys that are beginners is um, you really want to maximize the possibility for your project to come out flawlessly. So we're gonna lay him on an easy press mat and then place one inside of him. Now this is double trouble here. You don't have to have an easy press mat underneath if you have one um, inside, but I just like to do it better safe than sorry. And now we're gonna take our cut file here and lay it right where we want it. And again, you guys can get out the measuring tape if you want it 
if you want to make sure that you have these perfectly in the center you can totally do that it's another one of those tricky ones to to uh to align up anyways so just take your time keep using that ruler And I think this looks great. So once you like the way it looks, we're going to bring in our baby Easy Press here and we're just going to heat it. Now this baby Easy Press, the Easy Press Mini, was designed to be moved around, which is why we are constantly kind of making him move because that's how he was designed. He has a double coated uh, heat plate here, double ceramic coated. So he's built to be moved around. So we're just going to move him around and uh, you can set a timer for 30 seconds on your phone. If you have a little timer, you can do that. But of course, this baby Easy Press does not come with a timer like the other larger ones do. Um, so we're just going to continue to heat this and move it around. I'm already seeing bubbles, which is a great sign. And let this cool before you remove your transfer tape. I'm just going to start on a corner and peel this right off. And that was pretty flawless, guys. So we're just going to remove our Easy Press mat from the bag. And you can see how cute this guy turned out. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed these awesome iron-on projects, perfect for beginners. We made a really, really cool farmhouse pillow, an adorable punny crafty shirt, and a really cute classy uh, state cut file clutch. I hope that you all learned a whole lot. If you have a favorite little tip that you learned, leave it in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And of course guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more awesome craftiness like this. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.